Let's take a closer look at the rear foot varus deformity. The rear foot varus deformity is when the rear foot is inverted upon the forefoot orientation. In other words, the calcaneus is usually toward the midline with respect to how the forefoot is. This causes increased ground reactive forces on the lateral aspect of the foot, attempting to force the forefoot or the first ray down toward the ground. When we're looking at a rear foot varus from the back, a lot of times the calcaneus can be inverted, but if it's, the condition is compensated, it will be able to stand up and down, and in a few cases, it will be slightly everted. A rear foot varus deformity is believed to be due to largely a tibial varum deformity where we have curvature in the tibia. The rear foot will often follow, and again, this will depend upon the range of motion of the subtalar joint. This will have a lot to do to how the fetus is carried in utero and the forces acting on the tibia, which, as we've talked about previously, can cause tibial varum as well as internal tibial torsion. The main thing we have to ask ourselves with the rear foot varus is, is it compensated or uncompensated? What that basically means is the person able to get their tripod fully to the ground between the heel, the base of the fifth, and the base of the first ray. Can they get the first ray all the way down to the ground? So if they can, the condition is said to be compensated. If they can get it down only a little, it is said to be partially compensated. If they can't get it down at all, it is said to be uncompensated. It's the uncompensated conditions that often cause um, a forefoot varus deformity and often a cavus foot type. A lot of this is going to depend upon the range of motion of the calcaneus. If the calcaneus does not have an adequate range of motion available to it through the uh, talocalcaneal joint, the calcaneo um, cuboid joint, we will not be able to get the first ray all the way down to the ground. This is going to determine how the rear foot is going to sit on the ground and what it's going to look like when we look at the patient from the posterior. A lot of times a rear foot varus deformity, particularly those that are uncompensated, are going to be accompanied by limited amounts of calcaneal eversion. We generally like to see about four degrees of calcaneal eversion occurring in a normal foot. These people often won't even be able to get to zero. The cavus foot type will often occur with the rear foot varus as well for that person attempting to descend the first ray and get it all the way down to the ground. So the um, head of the first is having a tough time getting down and this causes a cavus type arch. Here we, in this picture by Kirby we see the person with the rear foot varus coming to the ground and increase ground reactive forces on the lateral aspect of the foot provided there is adequate range of motion available um, of the calcaneus as well as the talus the medial aspect of the foot has a tendency to come down so that we can equalize the ground reactive forces from side to side. Some consequences of the rear foot varus deformity are going to be the foot being over supinated at toe off. In other words, the person having more of a low gear push off off the oblique axis of the forefoot. Because of this dependency and weight on the lateral aspect of the foot, there's going to be excessive use of the peroneal muscles and there's going to be stress of these lesser metatarsals. Oftentimes the person will dorsiflex the great toe because the big toe will not be able to be fully in contact with the ground and that ray will not be able to make a stable tripod.